Hello, I'm, I'm John Ferris with Dead, Buried, and Back at the, the 2012 Dragon Con with my very special guest, multiple Bram Stoker Award-winning author, John Mayberry. Jonathan, thank you for joining me at, uh, at the con this year. I know your schedule is very hectic. As a matter of fact, I'm surprised to see that you didn't have a coffee IV hooked up to your arm. Uh, I just took it out. Actually, so. <laughs> is, that, is that where the bruising is coming from? Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, the coffee IVs are a daily thing with me, and, and without those, I wouldn't be productive. Well, let's, let's jump right in uh, with V-Wars. Um, and talk about V Wars a little bit. Uh, v Wars uh, just came out in July um, by IDW Publishing. Uh, and tell us, tell us a little bit about V Wars. Well, I had, I had worked on a project with IDW. It was a GI Joe anthology. And while we were doing that, the editor asked me what I would like to do if I were going to edit a book because the last one was edited by Max Brooks. And uh, I said, well, I'd love to do something with vampires because I'd love to see vampires get scary again. And vampires, for a while, haven't been scary. We've romanticized them so much that they've kind of lost their teeth. A bit. So I said I, I proposed an idea that we do something with a science fiction base in a shared world anthology. Um, a melting polar ice releases a bacteria that triggers junk DNA, and that causes people to become so a portion of the population to become uh, vampires. But the vampires from whatever culture they're from. So if they're Chinese, they become a Chinese vampire, and, and so on. And all the vampires in different world cultures are radically different, and they're they're scary in different ways. And I, I enlisted uh, seven other authors, uh, uh, Nancy Holder, Scott Nicholson, uh, James A. Moore, Keith the Candido, Gregory Frost, and Yvonne Navarro to um, bring the scary. And we, we, we come with, a, with an anthology, and IDW did a beautiful packaging job with it. It's a beautiful anthology, and it's my first as editor. Now, I was going to mention, this is the first time you've been an editor and could both a contributor. In, in, a, in a story before, and how, how well what, did that work for you? It worked pretty well uh, because since it's a shared world, I mean, if it, for, first off, if it wasn't a shared world, I probably would not have a story in there. I'd probably just edit it. But because it's a shared world, the idea is I, they wanted me, IDW wanted me to create a storyline and kick it off and then hand the ball to other writers. And so I, I created the, the first story that kind of laid the groundwork for the science and for the, the cultural perspective. And then we handed it off and we spent a lot of time, the, the, the different authors and I, we spent a lot of time in emails, Skypes, and chat rooms, knocking ideas back and forth so that we were, we were telling stories that worked well with each other's and without interfering with the ind individual creativity because everyone has a different style and everyone brought a, brought a different energy to the game and it, it worked beautifully. I was going to say, do you have any problems with any collaboration with the authors or their schedules or anything when you were together? Uh, well, they gave us a long lead time on the, on the thing and they're all busy writers so there was a little bit of, of uh, lag time in terms of getting all the stories together but only because the writers are successful and busy. Um, as far as getting along, it was we were having way too much fun. We were, we, were, we were having a great time with this project, so we got along great. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's awesome. And so, so far, so good with V Wars. You, 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 like you said, you, you've kind of had so many different authors collaborating on it and so many different ideas pouring into it. And I imagine there was a whole lot of material which you could not use in directions you wanted to go. Yeah, That's and authors and authors we wanted to, to include. You know, I, I, originally, I had, I had wanted to do uh, maybe 10 or 12 authors with shorter stories, but... Uh, IDW is doing a lot of its anthologies with uh, novellas instead of uh, short stories, um, with the, the thought that it, with a novella, the writer has more time to develop characters, and the reader then becomes more invested in those characters and gets more of an attachment to the book, which you know is, is, a, is a certainly good logic. A lot of other anthologies are doing that, um, but it left us with a lot of stuff still to do. So you know, it's being pitched right now to uh, to TV, to uh, Sci-Fi Channel. It's being pitched as a comic book, and we are certainly looking at the possibility of V Wars 2, you know, going further with it. Because by no means uh, have we reached the creative potential, um, you know, the end of the potential for this. That's awesome. Well, I certainly enjoyed V Wars, and, and I'm definitely looking forward to the next one. Um, changing subjects a little bit, Rotten Ruin. It's uh, the basic book is in sixth printing. I understand. Uh, the paperback is in sixth printing. Uh, the hardback went, went through multiple printings first. Oh, wonderful. So it's, it's a very popular book. It's a very popular series. The second in the series, uh, Dustin Decay, won the Bram Stoker Award. That's in multiple printings in hardback. And it's about to go into paperback uh, the same day that the third book, Flesh and Bone, comes out. T tell us a little more about the series for the, some of the people that might not be familiar with it. What has made it so popular? Is it the complexity of the characters, the storyline, or is it just the, the zombie craze? Well, it's a little bit of everything. I mean, the storyline is, is, is pretty simple. If, if, if you ever saw uh, something like Night of the Living Dead, the zombie apocalypse story, this is 14 years later. Somebody 
if somebody survived the apocalypse, if a group of people survived, what would their culture look like? You know, what would what would life day to day life be like 14 years after the apocalypse? And we take a, the, our point of view character as a 14 year old kid, so he or 15 year old kid, so he's grown up after the old world is destroyed. Um, he's, he leads us into the story, and we get to grow up with him as he understands the story and and understands the world, and understands that the world is not what he thought it was. Um, at the same time, the story is not about how many zombies you can kill. I mean, head count is not a, not a, a big thing for me. Um, I know it is in a lot of zombie stories, where it's all a matter of how many, how many heads you can blow up, but to me that dehumanizes the person the zombie was. And each of these people, is a, and each of the zombies that's out there is a victim. They were killed in, in horrible ways, they died in pain and alone, and to dishonor that, I think it's, it's just fundamentally wrong. So the story is really about what defines humanity and also the value of human life. At the same time, it's a story about two brothers who had lived their lives um, apart because of misconception, misunderstanding, who then find a, uh, the truth and the truth brings them together as brothers. And that, that's a huge part of the story. And a lot of people relate to that. Uh, they relate to the fact that you know, sometimes you can be crippled and blinded by your own assumptions. And once you get past the assumption, you see the world differently, and sometimes that world is the one you really should and want to live in. And, and congratulations, I meant uh, on, uh, wanted to say again, for being chosen for this year's Dragon Con uh, book club. That is quite an honor. That was an, a, a, such a flattering thing. I mean, the, the, the book club here is huge, and, and they're very enthusiastic. And it, it was so much fun to, we, we had a, a chance to sit down and talk about uh, Rotten Ruin, and there were some folks who couldn't make it because of the parade, and they twi uh, tweeted about it and emailed me, and. Um, people are having fun with it, and uh, of course, we also uh, have the buzz now of you know, it's been picked up as a film, and um, that's a lot of fun.